people well let's hit you with our next story this evening uh a little bit more than 250 million we've got like how much is that how much is that kit can you can you count the zeros oh uh, that's a billion that's a big <laughs> 800 a billion 858 Billion dollars. A billion. A hundred fifty-eight billion dollars. Oh, Colin wanted me to do that. We had to have the doo doo doots in there. Yes. So. Oh, I didn't um, hear the doo doo doots. You didn't hear the doo doo doots. <laughs> I didn't hear the doo doo doots. No. <laughs> Those. Hopefully, chat heard them. If the chat heard it, that's fine. But I don't need All to hear right. it. But. Uh, I wonder why. Um, anyway, you're hearing it all earlier. Um, how about this? What about now? Yes. Ooh. There we go. We got it. We did yeah. it. Uh, you know, we by the way, it. I actually, but he, he, hearing, hearing that line, you know, um, side note, I always thought about doing like, a because Personally, I always wanted to be a, uh, you know, either a paleontologist or work in film mm. or movie or script writing. And as a kid, you know, I remember even as a teenager, you know, I like the Austin Powers films, especially the third one that came out. Mm -hmm. and I always yeah. thought like, hey, if there was ever a fourth Austin Powers film, I would set it up to where Dr. Evil wins mm. and like he takes over the world or he takes over America. But he finds out like like one the senators and the quote unquote good guys, they were stealing from the people. They were criminals. And he's like, well, wait a minute. And like he comes around like, I thought I was the bad guy. You're the good guys. Here. <laughs> like and, and be Austin perfect. Powers is being is being tricked by like other people to because he's part of the resistance to stop Dr. Evil because Dr. Evil is doing good for people like he's giving them health care. He's he's fixing up the infrastructure. He's giving education it's like because Dr. Evil's like, well, there's nothing evil for me left to do. Like I got to do good. And so, what like those, everyone else, what, what are those? What does that hospital look like? It cuts to like farmer with produce, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. take sorry, take sorry, three. get off topic. Okay, take yeah, okay. take three. We got our third story this evening from Bean Boy Judd Legume. Um, eight hundred and fifty-eight billion dollars. Oh. I got I got it that time, chat. Yes, I got, got it that it. time. <laughs> you fucking chat. God. <laughs> so in 2015, the United States spent 585 billion on its military, more than the next 11 countries combined. What a start. Um, since then, the United States withdrew from Afghanistan. Ending its longest running war. <laughs> and yet. Eight years later, President Biden approved $858 billion in military spending, an increase of about $273 billion. Had military spending kept pace with inflation since 2015, military spending would be below $700 billion. Instead, the military budget is barreling towards $1 trillion annually. Okay, the budget of the Pentagon now exceeds the budgets for the next 10 largest cabinet agencies combined. Current defense spending, after adjusting for inflation, is higher than it was at any point during the Cold War. 2023 will represent the largest U.S. military budget since World War II. Okay. Oh. While conventional wisdom is that American politics is hopelessly divided, Republicans and Democrats routinely come together for that, what's it called, Colin? What's that called? Unity. You know what it is. Um, <laughs> Democrats routinely I, I, come together. Go ahead, Kit. It's it's called, as the great Barack Obama would say, uh, I'd call it bipartisanship. Bipartisanship. <laughs> George uh, fucking Carlin would, would call it a big club if I do remember, you know, my, my book studies. Um, so we've got... There is virtually no public criticism of military spending 
increases among members of Congress, while our support um, for larger defense budgets is seen as expression of patriotism. In the House, only one member, AOC, voted against the omnibus bill that contained the military spending. Many Republicans opposed the bill, but only because they believed it contained too much support for domestic programs. Pause there for a second. Yes. Shout wow. out to the DSA for commending AOC for not for voting no, but fail to call out everyone else who did. Yes. Who was in the squad. Uh, by the way, DSA, forgot. DSA, look, um, I don't know why you went to bat hard for AOC after all those years, but I mean, sooner or later, maybe most of your membership will wake up that she is just a neoliberal mm. uh, fraud. You know, every but, every know. rose uh, does have its thorn kit. Uh, every one of them. You got me. You got me. You got I got gotcha. you. I got all you. Y'all weren't ready for it. I'll be here all week, folks. Um, <laughs> while Republicans and some Democrats insist that uh, it's paid for. With budget cuts or tax increases, military spending increases are routinely financed with deficit spending, and no one is wringing their hands about the inflationary impact of adding hundreds of billions to the military budget, but money printers still go burr, just in case you were wondering. Um, the absence of a real public debate does not mean these aren't real trade-offs. To this level of defense spending, 1% of the 2023 defense budget is $8.58 billion. That could finance over 1 million public housing units, enough to effectively end homelessness in the United States. The federal government currently spends about $3.5 billion annually to combat homelessness. In case you were wondering, um, would the United States be better off with an $850 billion military budget instead of $858 million and much less homelessness? What about increasing compensation for teachers? Colin would like that, I'm sure or extending the expanded child tax credit to keep kids out of poverty. How about we do that? These are all legitimate policy debates, but these debates are not happening, says Judd Legume. It's not Ukraine either. It's the, is the 2023 military budget inflated to account for the cost of helping Ukraine fend off the Russian invasion? No, the 858 billion budget includes just 800 million in support for Ukraine. Just 800 million dollars just in case you're gonna milk that for what it's worth absolutely <laughs> i am <laughs> this is not to say that the biden administration or congress believes ukraine will only require 800 million rather congress is considering and expected to approve an extra 21.7 billion for the Pentagon above the already expanded 2023 annual budget to allocate more money to resupply materials used in Ukraine. Um, so any thoughts so far? Like, hold on, math. I have mm -hmm. to do math. Hold on, math. hold on. We're gonna get an edge. We're gonna get an education lesson here very quick here, folks, because again. Uh... So much of this money has been lost. To quote Dwight D. Eisenhower, again, be careful, beware of the military industrial complex. For again, it's, it's again, he it's so much money has been wasted. In fact, hold on, let me get Eisenhower's direct quote. Eisenhower. It's like don't trust the military, military. industrial complex. Yep. Yep. Hang on. Well, the great Shaquille O'Neal once said it's all about geometry. Colin, do you have that geometry? Yeah, well, again, math hard. Um <laughs> so and it's too many zeros, and I don't work with that many zeros normally mm. in real life. But <laughs> um the calculator's only got this many numbers. But so well, how much money was sent to Ukraine? That was eight hundred million, right? Yes, plus twenty one. So is that one so is that one or ten percent of eight hundred billion? I would Could imagine one percent. Yes, because you're working in zeros, and so you take a yeah. zero off. Yeah, so it's one percent. So really, like, what we're sending to Ukraine is literally a drop in the bucket. Bucket, literally, as far as yes, but they're willing to tack on twenty-one billion just for that to the Pentagon. Right. So here we, so here we really, go. Uh, I ahead. actually got the quote. Do you mind? Do you mind? 
Uh, mm-hmm. every, every gun that is made, every warship launched, every rocket fired signifies in the final sense a theft from those who hunger and are not fed, those who are cold and are not closed. Uh, this world in arms is not spending money alone. It is spending the blood, uh, the sweat of its laborers, the geniuses of its scientists, the hopes of its children. The cost of one modern heavy bomber is this, a modern brick school in more than 30 cities. It is two electric power plants, each serving a town of 60,000 population. It is two fine, well-equipped hospitals. Uh, hospital, sorry about that. Uh, it is some 50 miles of concrete pavement. We pay for a single uh, fighter with a half a, mil- a half a million bushels of wheat. We pay for a single destroyer with new homes that could have housed more than 8,000 people. This is not a way of life at all in any true sense. Under a cloud of threatening war, it is humanity hanging from a cross of iron. General Dwight D. Eisenhower, chance for and- speed. For- Joe Biden probably in another speech, but you know, um, <laughs> like anyway, you want to see where that money's going, boys and girls at home. Um, so oh, according God. to an analysis by Stephen Simler, approximately four hundred and fifty-two billion of the eight hundred and fifty-eight billion military oh, wow. budget will go to the private contractors every year. More than half of military spending goes to contractors like Lockheed Martin, North of Grumman, and Raytheon. Ugh. The axis of greed and evil. Um, so here's that graph in case people were wondering. So Biden's Pentagon budget will give $452 billion to private companies, right? So in 2012, is it, look, it goes up. It's, it's up. it's up here now. Here's private contracts. Here's other spending graphs, people. So Lily half, as I said. Yes. Um, more than. Jesus Christ. Investors have taken note of unrestrained spending on weapons and other military equipment. The S&P 500 I- index declined 19.4% in 2022. But Lockheed Martin and North of Grumman each saw their stock price increase in 2022 by more than 35%. And I'm sure Nancy got a cut. Um... So look at these graphs. Look at that. Look, look at that. It goes up. That's that's how graphs work when, when we're talking about stocks. Up is good. Buy, buy here. Sell here. You know what I'm saying? And look at it go up more. Here's North of Grumman. These are one year, right? For both Lockheed. That's a, And that's just a so you all know. And just so you all know that these politicians last year beat the market again, just like they did in 2020 and in 20 uh, and, and in 2021 in 2022, our U S politicians in the house and Senate successfully beat the market and raked in millions upon millions in stock. Oh, yeah, trades. They did. But again, this is what makes, and I, like Jamal Bowman, of Turkey was it's so corny as fuck, but like the fact that he was bragging online that like, oh, we like the Democrats, we fell in line and like we voted for our team Jeffries. Like, yeah, because he, you're responsible for voting for this shit. And you're happy about that? I mean. So that's not flex, dude. No, it just tells so, me. We're fucked. Where we really are. Um. But to continue, in 2022, the defense industry employed 770 federal lobbyists. That means defense contractors employ nearly two federal lobbyists for every member of Congress. They're playing zone defense out here, people. uh, There's more than man coverage. This is two-man coverage. Um, I just see people running a screen. Sorry. Anyway. um, So... They spent over $101 million on federal lobbying in the 2022 cycle. Defense industry PACs and executives donated $18.9 million to federal candidates. The money was spread relatively equally between Republicans and Democrats because we're they're part of a uniparty. 
um, the spending in 2022, but the defense industry was not an aberration between 2001 and 2021. The top five defense contractors, Boeing, General Dynamics, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Raytheon, spent over $1.2 billion on federal lobbying and campaign contributions, according to data compiled by the Center for Responsive Politics. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, an advocate for large military spending increases, was on the board of Raytheon prior to being nominated by Joe Biden, my good friend. The position paid him 300000 per year. 2022, the defense industry. What? I clicked the next button. What happened? You might have missed. Maybe. There we go. There Report you go. By the project on government oversight concluded that the revolving door of Pentagon officials and senior military leaders seeking lucrative post-government jobs end up conflating. What is the best financial interest of defense contractors, excessively large Pentagon budgets, endless wars, and overpriced weapon systems with what is the best interest of military effectiveness and protecting citizens? So, keep in mind, this is money that the Pentagon doesn't want. Every year, the top Pentagon uh, brass submits a list of unfunded priorities, essentially a wish list, everything that they want from here to the moon to the White House histor historically, the understanding was that not everything on this list would be funded. Resources are limited, and it is the role of civilian leadership to de determine priorities. God, that's... Okay, this year, the White House examined this list and proposed a budget of $802 billion. In recent years, however, military leaders have started sending the list of rejects to the Congressional Armed Services Committees as a sort of appeal. For a time, these lists were generally ignored. But not any longer. This year's congressional committees have rubber stamped nearly every single item on the list. So, after adding funding for weapon systems that the White House deemed unnecessary, keep that in mind, Congress also added funding for weapons that the Pentagon itself does not want. This year's budget, for example, prohibits the retirement of the F-22 Raptor fighter jet and scuttles retirement plans for various aircraft, including B-1, F-15, E-3, AWACS, and the C-40 aircraft. Uh, the Navy sought to decommission 24 si ships and build eight, but the approved budget authorities and sequels to Battleship, the procurement of 11 Battle Force ships, and reverse plans for the early retirement of 12 vessels in the coming year. So... so we don't want the toys. No. Pentagon. Our stuff Congress. is falling apart. We'll give them to you anyway. The Marines we'll give them need better you. crayons. And Hey! 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 Hey, my dad's got good crayons, all right? It's going to be fine. Uh, hey, buddy. We need so, those crayons, all right? Now, first of all, first do. of all, we always got hand-me-downs. That's what the Marine Corps yes. always got, hand-me-downs. Yes. Yeah, people, people in Nam were still using the Garand, yes. Um, Desert Storm still using M60s, and they hated it then. Nom guys loved it. New guys like, nah, I don't want to lug that thing around. That thing's heavy. Fuck that. Um, so this is what did get cut. The defense spending bill includes a four percent across the board pay increase for military personnel and civilians, but there was a proposal for additional two point four percent for troops and defense. Department civilians making less than 45000 a year to account for inflation. Inflation in 2022 was about 7. The increase would have benefited 783,000 service members and about 37,000 civilians. The benefit, however, was removed by House and Senate negotiators. Oh, fuck Military this. Yeah. Fuck this. Fuck yeah. that, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so you... <sighs> so... Hundreds of thousands of military personnel that make less than forty five thousand annually, they don't got lobbyists. So, you know what they I'm saying? Ain't shit. Yeah, yeah, they ain't getting shit. Oh, they also can't pass don't forget, audit. No audit five times in a row now. Yep. Yep. Seven of the twenty seven entities that make up the Department of Defense received a clean bill of financial health. They're good. They're all right. What? Yeah. That same Department of Defense that spends about $1 billion per year employing 16,000 auditors to conduct the financial review but has not been able to achieve meaningful improvements. They don't get money. They don't need it. They're good. Um, this, 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 is, this is not... Here's the thing. Even the Romans didn't do anything this incompetent until nearing the end 
of their golden era. So, I mean, come on. They also have this far better roads. Far better roads. That is true. That is true. We we should not compare ourselves to the Roman Empire. At least their roads and are still around. Better water. Ask Flint. Um, <laughs> like... Ah. Oh. As Chicago too, we we have lead in our drinking water. Yes, yes, um, and dead bodies in your lakes, but we don't ask about them. You know, no, we don't. <laughs> we keep that very quiet. Um. Yeah.